you have a copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio and you want to know how to mask, well, in DaVinci Resolve, there is a tool called Magic Mask. Usually, you would open up Fusion, you would grab like a polygon or a spline tool, and then you just start drawing around them. Now that's awful. People hate doing that. It's time consuming and doing it for every single frame takes forever. So I'm gonna show you how to use this tool. To open this in Fusion, it's just Shift Space. You just type in Magic and it should pull up Magic Mask. Press Enter. And as long as you had Media 1 selected, you'll place Magic Mask in between these two nodes. This is your in, this is your out, and this is what's affecting it in between. There's only two things you need right now, the plus and the minus dropper tool. Now all you're going to do, we give ourselves some more space, is draw on the character. So in this case, I want Aaron and the buildings. So I'm going to draw over him and draw over the buildings. Now, I'm kind of just guessing where it is. If you want to make your life easier, in the settings tool, change the blend mode so that you can see what you're cutting out as you do it. And then you can just undo the blend afterwards. Way you can get a clearer picture of what you're drawing on. Then look at this tool. All I'm doing is you have to track it forward. So I drew on this one and it makes a reference frame. This is now our primary reference frame. To move forward, you can go one frame at a time, which is this bottom one, which will just move on to the next frame that it hasn't rendered. So if I go all the way back here and I press this, it jumps forward to this frame because it's already rendered out the other ones. So wherever you want to tweak it, you go back to that frame, you grab your plus or minus dropper tool and you just Draw on what you need. You see, it's got little errors here and there. This tool is not perfect, but honestly, I'm giving it a very unfair task. This is not a scene I really need to cut out, but with this tool, I can't. So in this case, I would recommend starting a fresh one, and you can get rid of the old tool, do magic mask again and give it new information because this is a different set of colors specifically i don't want the building anymore so i'm just going to make make it a little easier on it to figure out what i'm trying to keep in frame but this is the basic process you will go through you'll kind of correct it frame by frame it's not going to be perfect by any means now with these masks you can do whatever you want with them there's a lot of different ways you can kind of utilize these. And a few of the ones that I've found is, you know, one, you mask them out, you put something else behind it. Maybe you put some glitch effects, maybe you add some emphasis because of the music that you have going on. Another one that I've found more recently, create a copy. I can first off make sure it works. I'm gonna go to the reference frame. I'm going to draw on it, just somewhere that I already have just so I force it to re-render all the frames, because sometimes when you make a copy, it'll break and it just doesn't like to work. But you can take this, go to the matte page, and you should blur your mass a little bit, lower the threshold so it kind of gets rid of some of those like jank edges. Um, you can even erode and dilute it if you feel like you just need less of it. So you can invert this mask, and now I have everything but the character. And if I were to go grab a glitch effect, put that behind it we can do this and it doesn't look great because you know he's just fully blacked out but let's say you create another copy of this exact scene i'm going to reset the fusion composition which is just get rid of the masking on it so it's back to a normal one and we're going to turn this glitch effect into q lighten linear like whatever we're going to make it an overlay basically so we'll just do that so now you can have the character glitch so you can use this in like just for an impact or something, or you can just do it over the whole scene, but you can just perfectly cut out just him to have the effect, which is really cool. So another way you can use this is with a black bar. There's multiple ways you could do this. You could use an adjustment layer and just crop the top and bottom. It depends on what you're going for, right? You got black bars, however you want to do it. Well, we're going to take a duplicate Open this in Fusion. I'm going to, again, go to the reference frame, do this, and let it render. There we go. And I'm going to render it both ways. We're going to uninvert it. So now he's over the screen. Right? 
black bars are cool. Now, the issue with black bars, obviously, is with how jank the magic mask can be. You can see all over the place these little, it's, yeah, these little imperfections, which you'll have to fix. It's still going to be a problem. Yeah, if you're doing black bars, you can get a bit creative with it. You can crop and uncrop the black bar when certain body parts would be behind it. Like, we'll undo it again now. And now he's in front of the bars. But this is not the best example of it, right? You don't need to cut out Aaron doing ridiculous and Like, if you're just cutting out a basic character, this is just a character. They're moving quite a bit, though. So again, this would not be fun to manually mask, and I don't even know if it would be worth it in a lot of cases. Let's see how it does. And that was with one drawing. It did pretty good. Just missing ooh, a bit of the chin. Just missing a bit here and there. If we go through and make a few corrections, this would be totally usable. And with this too, if you're seeing imperfections, just like a few here and there on hair, you could always render this out with no background and then just mask those parts manually to like correct the mask after the fact. This can just do the bulk of the work for you. And then there you go, you have a cut out lum that looks way too good for the fact that I just spent like 30 seconds of it. I could put whatever I want behind this, I could layer scenes or really just do anything with it. Now, one thing to consider is I've been doing all this on mode faster, which is my preferred method because better does have better edges. It gets rid of the magic mask wiggle. However, sometimes it struggles. In this case, looks like it's doing pretty good. Still got a few issues here and there, and that little bit of feathering that it does definitely makes the mask just look better. You just might have to make a few more weeks frame by frame. It, it's the more time consuming, and it does look better, but you will spend more time going frame by frame because it is going to make more mistakes. And in my experience, it just really likes to undo. Like you'll correct something and it just is like, oh yeah, you want to get rid of this, right? Yeah, totally. You want to get rid of this. I can tell. And it'll just keep trying to do it. Of course, it has to be her boob this time. Why? Why that specifically, Magic Bass? Come on, be respectful. And there you go. You have a really good looking mask. Just that easy. Now, something to consider with these masks, when you're putting something else in the background to help it out even more, you can make a copy, reset the fusion composition, and then set the original to like a screen. And then whatever you put behind it will be overlaid by the original, making the mask look even smoother. Like the character will pop, but the background won't be, you know, going over the whole thing so that you can't see what's behind it. But it lets that mask have even more like room to breathe. And this in particular is really good for doing like eye shots. So if you have something going in someone's eye, you'll create the, you'll make a mask of the eye. You'll invert it. So now she looks cursed. We're going to create a duplicate, reset the composition. Now she has her eyes back. We'll screen it. And then whatever you want to put behind it and you can kind of move it into place. I'll just zoom in on this shot for this case. So then you put whatever you want behind it. In this case, I'm gonna create a duplicate and make two versions of the spiral staircase, and there you go. So now, it would be behind her eyes and it looks slightly transparent and you can kind of use that. In this case, I need to manually track these to stay in position, but you get the idea. Because really, again, it depends on how you use the masking. You can use it to just overlay a bunch of characters. You can use it to put a character in a scene they're not supposed to be in, or to transition between scenes by cutting out the background, or you fade in the, you have the character pop in immediately and the background fades in. Like, you just have to figure out what looks good to you. But this tool in general is great for just giving you that opportunity. Because sometimes you'll look at something and be like, 
would look really good if I masked it out and had it like pop in. And then you do it and it doesn't look that good. And you don't want to waste four hours cutting out a scene frame by frame to see the proof of concept to find out it's awful. So even if you use this just to test scenes, it's so useful. Also, uh, Da Vinci's just fantastic in general. So beyond that, that's Magic Mask. And so that's really it. Go out there, make something cool.